Did you know, watching Indie Corner will make you more attractive and more intelligent. Welcome back everyone to your November 10th edition of Indie Corner. Every two weeks on this show we always go over what's out in the Wii U eShop and the 3DS eShop, then we talk about some new indie games on the way, check some Kickstarters if there are some, talk about what we thought in our review section, and finally we go and look at some new indie uh, shirts that we're adding in the Indie Corner shop. So stay tuned, we've got a loaded episode for you guys today. Here we go, eShop updates. Our first title for today is Octodad, Dadliest Catch. In this quirky game, players will control an octopus masquerading as a human. It's up to you to ensure your human family doesn't discover who you really are as you struggle to act human with your boneless tentacles. Next we receive the infinitely challenging Electronic Superjoy on the Wii U. The sequel, Groove City, was released earlier this year and now the original, much harder and much longer game has found its way to the eShop. Run, jump, pulse pound your way through 60 levels on a rhythmic journey through an hour and a half of electronic music. Over in Europe, the eShop received Bike Rider Ultra DX. Ride a bike in this auto runner and try to grab the three golden coins in each level. There are several worlds to be played through, each with a half a dozen levels to master. Also landing in Europe was the highly acclaimed Freedom Planet. Control one of three characters to save your world from war. The gameplay has often been described as similar to classic Sonic games. Coming in a bit later than the North American release, but still in time for Halloween, was Slender The Arrival. The game is an official video game adaptation of Slenderman. Prepare to be startled with a bunch of jump scares in this disturbing horror game. Finally, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth has been released in the European eShop on both the 3DS and the Wii U. In this game you can expect to play through randomly generated levels and find bizarre treasures that will change your form and give you powers. Explore the depths of your basement and see if you can make your way to safety. Over in North America we saw the release of the first holiday theme game Christmas Adventure of Rocket Penguin. The game plays like a simplified version of Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Players draw lines in order to keep the penguin gliding across the level, picking up power-ups and such. We also saw the release of the charming human resource machine. In this game, players will subtly learn how to create programming logic. Players must instruct their employees step by step what to do. This often involves moving inputs to the outputs using specific steps in between. Lastly, there was Picto Party for the Wii U. As the name would suggest, it's a party game in which you must guess what the other player is drawing before time runs out. On the 3DS eShop, two tribes revived their original, Tokitori, and brought it into 3D. The game is a 2D puzzle platformer in which you guide Tokitori in search of his trapped egg friends. The European eShop received a new zombie title called Escape from Zombie City. In this game you're constantly running upwards mowing down the herds of zombies. The game offers various types of guns and zombies to shoot. Now for project updates. This includes DLC, patches, or any new information we got on some games that aren't released yet. As for our project updates, Napnock announced a new patch for Affordable Space Adventures, which would include five new difficult levels bundled under a pack titled Origins. The new content is available to anyone who owns the game, but is highly recommended to be attempted after beating the game. We also received a new trailer for Tadpole Treble, which shows off a fairly in-depth composition mode. A new trailer for Aquamoto Racing Utopia was also released. Fans looking for a jet ski like game experience should definitely take a look at this game. And now for some new projects. These are new indie games we've discovered over the last two weeks. We heard word that the puzzle venture game Fire might be coming to the Wii U. Fire is set in the Stone Age world where players help Ung find a new flame for his village after failing to keep the original flame lit. And Tiny Galaxy is back with his latest game, Kick Asteroids. Atari gamers will recognize the gameplay style similar to the classic Asteroids. Lastly, we also heard that Cubie Color would be coming to the Wii U. The goal of the game is to move a cube around an environment filled with cubes and to get to the top of the lock cube. Each side of your cube is color coded and will have different effects on the color cubes depending how you land on it. Finally, we had three game reviews regarding indie games in the last two weeks. Here are some highlights. Jonathan had a go with Human Resource Machine awarding it an 8 out of 10. 
He praises the gameplay for being genius and the game for having great music and artwork. His only gripe was that some puzzles are quite complex at times. Jonathan also reviewed Color Bombs, giving it a 2 out of 10. While the music is fine, the game is just too simple, boring to look at, and boring to play. And last on our list is Sean Long and his review of Slender, The Arrival, giving it a 7 out of 10. For a horror game, Slender succeeds in striking the right atmosphere, real scares, and very good audio. Sean did find that there was a lack of mission variety and a lack of character models though. And now let's talk some swag. Two weeks ago I put up three shirt designs for you guys to vote on. They were all Freedom Planet designs, slightly different. After tallying everything up, there was a huge vote for Design C. So this new shirt will be added to the Indie Corner shop found at ChopShopGoods.com. It's not available yet, but do keep an eye on it. It should be out in the next week or two. Now for this week, I've got a whole new shirt design for you guys to vote on. This week's theme is SteamWorld Dig. Here are three shirt designs. Let me know which one you like by voting down below in the YouTube comments, either A, B, or C. And whichever one gets the most vote in two weeks from now will be added to the Indie Corner shop, just in time for the holiday season. Once again, thank you so much for watching. It's been a blast putting this show together for you guys. Two days from now, there's going to be a new Nintendo Direct. We might learn a few more details about some new indie games. There's going to be a live Class vs. Crass discussion between Sean and I about an hour or two right after the Nintendo Direct on this channel. So do keep an eye out for that. Other than that, I'll see you guys two weeks from now on a new Indie Corner. Until then, keep on playing indie.